praise God, praise God. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. I pray that you're having a blessed night. You uh, you see my title. It, I'm going to go deep with this one, praise God. Hello, everyone. I know I haven't been on here. Um, busy. God has me real busy. Woo! But praise God, it's some good busy. <laughs> I didn't make up a whole thing. You know, us from Louisiana, we'll be making up whole, whole sentences, characters, all kind of stuff. But... Ah, uh, this is a deep subject, you guys. Oh my God, this is a deep subject. So, let me go ahead and walk this thing out. Praise God, hallelujah. All right, you see my title. Go ahead, tag and share, because I know I'm going to get some feedback off of this one. But, God, I've been wanting to do this for a long time. But you, you can't do anything until, remember I was telling you just with the other video? You got to move when God say move. But I noticed it when I was in California. And I'm talking about, I was in California 15 years. And so I'm going to start with my testimony and I'm going to go all the way, come back around. Okay. So here's this. The Bible says what God has drawn together, let no man put us under. Right. So we're going to talk all about all that. But I want to ask you, did God ordain that marriage? That's what we're going to be talking about tonight. Because here's the deal. Every marriage is not ordained of God. I don't care what y'all say. And I know some people are going to come for me. Don't worry, I got a lot to back it up, honey. Oh, yes, I do. First of all, statistics. Why is it that so many people get divorced? And I don't want to hear anything because when God is a perfect God, right? God is a just God, right? God is a holy God, right? God don't make mistakes, right? Come on, somebody, hallelujah, talk to me up in here. So so who, who tripping? Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Why is it 90% of Christian marriages fall? Come on, somebody. Or fail, I'm sorry. But hold on, in the world is 50%. So that's still more than, that's half, more than half. If God put it together, then what's happening here? Come on, someone, hallelujah. So I'm going to go and tell you my testimony. So I'd say 15 years in California. And um, let me go ahead and do a disclaimer. I don't mean anything because I have to say the whole story. So I hope people don't get offended. But I was in this church. And I noticed that they put a lot of marriages together. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not going to say the church name. I'm going to have that much respect for them. But they put a lot of marriages together. And I was like, oh, no. They tried to put me together as a little sharp usher. He was this sharp, y'all. And at first, I went along with it. I'm going to be honest with you. I did because, you know, I trusted my pastor and I loved them. And I started, you know, like talking to this guy. And I'm sorry. I'm going to be very, very transparent. I don't have time to play games with y'all. And I found out he was a little freak. I said, oh, no, no. And he just kept coming, kept coming. And I had to really tell him, look, I don't like you. All right. I was trying because I, you know, you see, he, very, he was kind of handsome, but his character was all jacked up. Oh, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Oh, let me slow myself down. Let me, let me start with. So long story short, I couldn't do it. I couldn't fall for the hokey doke. And I respected my pastor. But I saw the rest of the people that the rest of the people that he put together, maybe two or three marriages survived. All the rest of them, they didn't look happy. They didn't look happy. I'm sorry. They didn't look happy. I'm sorry. And to be honest with you, I noticed one other thing. It was much older guys with younger women. And I'm not trying to be funny. I want who God had for me, but I didn't want no older man like that. I was like, oh, no. So then they, you know, tried to do the little young guy. Like, I, he wasn't young, but he was short, like I said. And I was already like, wait a minute. I'm short. You can't be having two short people. That's just my preference, y'all. I'm sorry. And so long story short, I noticed, I said, God, what is going on here? And God said, just watch. And Lord, I got to say some hard things up in here tonight, but I have to. Okay, so then I started watching. And I noticed that married men would come after me. They had one. I was standing in a foyer, and me, his wife, my mentor, and he ended up just kissing me front in front of his wife on the cheek. And I just looked. I said, "What? What just happened?" And she looking like I said, "I don't know what's going on because I didn't know what was going on." So what had happened is there was a spirit of adultery going on because. I mean, marriages was breaking up. It was so much stuff. And I said, okay, God, where's this coming from? And I'm so sorry, you guys. I got I to gotta tell the whole truth. And I hope I hope people don't put this together because people that know the story go put it together and they're going to know who I'm talking about and what church. Sorry. I'm not trying to be ugly. I've just got to tell the truth up in here. So anyway, long story short, I said, God, I don't understand what's happening with this church. It's very powerful, but all this other stuff is going on. People of God, I need y'all to really hear me tonight. And I'm not trying to bash nobody, but if the shoe fit and wear it, hallelujah. 
So I, God said, I'm going to show you, Deanna. And one Saturday he did, I was to a meeting, and I did not want to see what I saw. Remember this, whatever is going on in that church is starting with the pastor or the preacher. So I want to talk to the pastor one day, and I noticed that this young girl, and he had his hands around her waist. And I'm trying to turn my head because everybody else was turning their head. God said, no, you don't turn your head. I want you to see why that spirit is in the church. And so nevertheless, I found out. And I remember by the time pastor got to me, he said, what's going on? And I was so upset. I said, I don't want nothing. Because I was so hurt because I was like, okay, so you're the reason all this stuff is going on in the church? I just said something. I just said something. Y'all not going to like me tonight. I'm telling y'all not going to like me. And I really don't care because I'm going to tell the truth up in here. Whatever spirit, whatever stuff is going on at your church, that's your pastor fault. What's your pastor doing? Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. There are some churches that I know. Marriage is all of a sudden. They in trouble. Pastor, that's because you got a lust spirit up in there, just going around, just going around, just going around, and y'all don't acting like y'all don't know what's happening. Y'all know what's happening. Stop playing that game. Stop playing that game. Whatever you got in that pulpit and you're not pure, it could be even on here. Don't you know that stuff is, is, is okay, thank you, Lord. He's the prince of the air, right? So that means spirit. So whatever a person's working with, that's what you're receiving. Come on, somebody. Entertainment is entering in and the containment. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm going to walk this thing through. So now y'all understand what's happening. Those are spirits. Those are spirits. And, and I know y'all not going to like this. There are maybe 20% churches in America that might be righteous. The rest of them. Oh, Lord, he's going to make me incorporate the two. I didn't know I was going to do that. God call them performance in the pulpit. You just ain't got caught yet, God say. I'm going to say it again. You just ain't got caught yet, God say. I'm going to say it one more time. You just ain't got caught yet, pastor, preacher, teacher, apostle. You know it's coming, right? Sooner or later. Go ahead, repent, step down, do the little finger like that and walk out. Y'all, y'all playing with people's souls and God is not pleased. All right. So let me continue to walk this thing out. So I got to, I got to get some word here. Hold on. Praise God. Hold, hallelujah. Hold on a minute. I got some scriptures cause you always gotta, you know, you gotta come back with scriptures. Cause I want to walk this thing out. Cause some people going to say, Oh, well that's not what the Bible say. So I'm gonna walk this thing all the way out. Tell you what the Bible say. So Mark 10, nine says, and it's the King James version say, what therefore God had joined together, let no man put asunder. Okay, we're going to start right there. Did God join that together? Come on, some, come on, somebody. Because I'm going to tell you, and that's why I wrote that little sharp, powerful book, Lust. And I'm not trying to just sell a book. I'm, I'm talking real. That's, that's the foundation of every iniquity. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, lust of the body. Y'all sitting in, in church. I wish I had my shades. Y'all sitting in church now with shades on. Like y'all cool. And, and then don't forget y'all got y'all phones. <sighs> God is a holy God. That sanctuary, you shouldn't be doing any of that. Not even on your tablets. I, that's why honestly, God ever, and I think he, I think he's about to give me a building just to be honest with you. I promise you no technology allowed. You can get mad. Don't come to my church. I don't care. I rather five pure people anyway than 5,000. <laughs> y'all ain't ready for me y'all ain't ready for me so let me continue with what i said so god said what i have joined together let no man put it asunder did god point and, and I, i'm going very specific because i have to I have to help y'all too many people dying god says spiritually and physically and too many marriages are falling apart and, and everybody's hurt because it, your friends your family your children everybody hurt so so stop that did God, but when you always go back to the beginning. I learned it from T.D. Jakes when I was in L.A. Going to Bishop Noel Jones Church. T.D. Jakes, that was a very a powerful sermon. He said, whenever you're in a problem, wherever you have a problem, always go back to the beginning. Did God put that together? Don't lie to yourself. When y'all first met, did you hear the spirit? Did you, did you ask God for confirmation? This is who I got for you to marry. Did you ask? Did you wait for confirmation? Or did you go before God and marry them because they find you fine and y'all had already not boots? Don't lie. Don't lie. Because once you once you soul tie, that's a wrap anyway. Y'all feeling that soul tie. Y'all and because here, here's the deal. And I'm gonna walk this thing out very slowly. Most people get soul tied before they get spiritual tied. Now it's a difference. It's a difference. Because your soul is the most important thing 
in your whole makeup. Come on, somebody, because the devil's after your soul. Once you get a soul tie, you're not thinking about their character. You're not thinking about their spirituality. You're not thinking about even if they're saved. Because most of y'all are, quote, Corinthians. Well, you know, they say if the if the male saved, then the woman saved, and vice versa. Y'all will go quoting scripture then real good. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. So that's the first thing. Second thing, really. Did God ordain that marriage? Okay, y'all y'all been together. Why do y'all let pastors, preachers, and teachers tell y'all to stay together when y'all not getting along? Y'all want to play with me up in here? Y'all will go 10, 15, 20, two years of fighting. And then come to church, hallelujah, hey girl, how you doing girl? As soon as you get home, I can't stand him. I can't, and on the phone, on the phone, just talk. God, I can't stand him. I, I wish he'd go. I wish he Y'all know it's true. That's not God. God says in James, chapter 1 says, when I bless you, I add no sorrow with it. Somebody, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Then you have to ask yourself generational curses. Did my mom get divorced? Did my dad get divorced? Did my grandfather get divorced? Did my grandmother? You guys, let me tell you something. I had to learn this. This took all this time for me to learn what I'm teaching you. You got to ask questions when you meet people. I don't care what nobody say. You got to ask questions. And the question is supposed to be to God first, not to your mother, not to your father. Uh, and most of you are getting married. I'm, I'm, I'm going here. Most of you getting married because the pastor say so. The, everybody like them. Your family like them or, or her or they got a good credit score. They got a good job. And, and this is the big one. This is the big one. Believe it or not. They find. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And fine. Going to take your butt to hell. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. They so fine. All right. Until guess what? Jackie, Bonita, Shanita. Everybody know he fine. And vice versa, ladies. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. You understand what I'm saying? So God want to pull back that cover. God want to expose every lie of the enemy. God said, I did not put all marriages together. And I know this is in the Bible because everybody talks about it. Well, they wrote, Moses wrote the bill of divorcement that you can't really divorce unless they die. I beg to differ. I beg to differ. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. If God did not put that together, then how are you bound? Come on. Talk to me. Talk to me for real. Come on. Put it in there. Put it in there. Come on. It don't matter. Come this way. Come that way. If God didn't put it together, then how are you bound? Somebody talk to me because maybe I don't know. Maybe you could teach me. I'm just saying. But let me continue. Let me continue. I'm going to throw in some scriptures every now and then while we're talking. Okay, so the expression, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder, means that marriage is a holy thing. And, and most of y'all don't believe it because y'all will get divorced tomorrow. Look how they do in the stars. Did they just change them like, um, change them like clothes? I ain't going to say what I was going to say. Y'all change them like clothes. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all get mad at them. I don't, I'm getting a divorce. Y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, somebody. Then y'all wonder, and y'all talk about the old people. I'm like, oh, I, can't, I don't understand why Big Mama used to take that and Big Daddy used to take that. i tell you one thing. They had a good family structure. Mm, come on, somebody. Because a lot of y'all, y'all want to get married, but you can't take nothing. You can't take no pressure. But yeah, you want to get married. Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all ain't ready for me tonight. Y'all ain't ready for me tonight. Because if you get married just because it's, it's good now, nah, what about when, when you know, how I, I love a new edition song, Can You Stand the Rain? Honey, the rain gonna come. The storm's gonna come. The test gonna come. The trial's gonna come. What you gonna do? You gonna leave? Let's say something happened. Oh, I'm going somewhere because I'm trying to tell y'all. In short, what God, why God made me do this, marriage is a holy thing. Stop just getting married to anybody just because, cause you in lust, or you got, or they got money, or your family, or the big one, or you lonely. Mm -hmm. That lonely spirit will make you get married to the wrong person and be miserable for the rest of your life, which I rebuke in the name of Jesus. So let me continue. It says, um, the injunction is taken from Bible. Matthew 19, 6. It appears first in print in English in Miles Coverdale's Bible, 1535. So this has been since 1535. They've been saying this. They are not twined then, but one flesh. Don't you understand that when you get married, you become one spirit? 
and then you wonder why you acting crazy because she acting crazy or he acting crazy and now you let me tell you something and, and i'm going i'm gonna put my testimony up in here because i have no choice i got married in 2012 and i can't lie you see some like some of y'all gonna lie <laughs> I heard God when he said, don't marry that guy. And I'm going to be honest with you. I was, ooh, I can't believe what I told God. I don't mind telling you. I said, God, um, you're not in my bed at night. Oh, yes. I got whooped for that one, too. And um, nevertheless, I married this guy. And even the day we got married, you guys, I was looking sad because and I, there's a guy that God always have a witness. He came up to me. And he said, Deanna, you okay? I said, oh, yes, fine, fine. My spirit was like, girl, you getting ready. To... But I had already said yes. I, I was a person of my word. So you know what I'm saying? I am a person of my word. Let me correct that. And I tell you, <laughs> in three months, I stopped hearing God. You talking, and I'm not trying to be arrogant. You're talking to a, a, a woman that hear God 24-7 all day long. God stopped talking to me. Y'all don't know. I felt, I can't even explain how I felt. I felt like half of me was dead. You know, for what? Some sex? You know, and I ain't even gonna lie. We was having sex. That, And I was a whole prophetess. I just graduated. I just completed prophetess class at the church. All kind of stuff. Let's just be real. And I will tell you this. God had a woman, a prophetess. She called me right the day before I met that man. And she said, um, Deanna, the devil wants to sift you. And I had not met him. I met him the day after. So I'm like, oh, girl, I'm cool. I'm cool. I was not cool. That was a warning because warning always come before destruction. But long story short, that man tried to kill me. And if it had not been for his daughter, I'm not kidding. He had beat me so bad until I didn't even know your head can get two sizes. And I'm not kidding. This, these are pictures that, yeah, my head had got this big. And he was getting ready to stab me with the knife, my knife. How you like that? Because, you know, I'm a chef with them shark knives. And... I don't know what's in that little 12 year old girl in the in the garage, but she opened that door. She said, Daddy, Daddy, look at me. And I'm I'm not gonna lie, I really believe I was gonna die because here's the deal. You know how they say that your life flash? I remember I was thinking about my daughter and everything. I was like, God, I'm finna die. But over some foolishness. And it's I really was thinking about my life. And but when she said, Daddy, look at me, but that was a, and that's how I know that spirit of rage. It broke when she said, Daddy. And that's when he threw down the knife. And of course he went to jail. But the whole thing was this. I blamed myself. I said, God, I heard you. And yet I still did what I wanted to do. I almost lost my life that night. And this ain't no exaggeration. Trust me. People in Sacramento know. Okay, this was real. And do you know, let me tell you about soul ties. I don't know why God got me going so deep. But I'm going, after he got out of jail, God said, now, get out the house. Do what you got to do. You know, do whatever, because we had a very nice home together. Well, uh, I, I, I pretended, because I was doing everything. And that's what my friends were saying. You're doing everything. He ain't doing nothing, because he would get a job quick, get a job quick. It was just crazy. I don't know what was happening to me. Once I said yes to something that wasn't of God, it seemed like everything just started going down, and I started losing it. And I'm not talking about crazy, but I just start making like, excuse me, once you make one bad decision, it seemed like it, uh, it, it just rolls like a domino effect. Don't, don't play with me up in here. Come on, let's be real. I ain't the only one. And so long story short, after he got out of jail, I ended up taking him back for a little while. And then I really, I said, wait a minute, Deanna, what you doing? And then I messed up and took him back. I'm going to be very transparent tonight. Very transparent. I don't think I've ever told this part. But for whoever this is, I'm going here. Took that fool back. <laughs> y'all don't know, but I'm about to tell y'all. And I have never shared this, but it's going to free somebody. He used to say it when I took him back, I'm going to get you back. But I'm thinking, I don't know what I was thinking, but I remember hearing, I'm going to get you back, I'm going to get you back. So one night we was in the bay, and I was sharpening my knives, because y'all know I'm a chef. And they had somebody on TV, and I said, boy, I'll cut you. But I was playing. That boy leaned over into my knife and cut himself. And I'm looking, and he said, tonight is the night. And I'm looking, because I'm, I'm not getting it, right? He called the police on me. Y'all ain't ready for me, huh? The police came. He said, I want her arrested for domestic violence. Mm, Y'all ain't ready for me, huh? I'm not going to even lie. I started crying. I said, don't do this. I said, please don't do this. He said, no. You, you thought it was a game? I mean, I saw the devil in his eyes, and he was serious. And the police was like, uh, are you serious? He said, yeah. They said, ma'am, we don't want to do this. They arrested me. While I went to jail that night, he emptied my bank account of 
all my money, all my thousands. I had my dad stand with me at that time. My dad couldn't vouch for this. So by time, it was so much mess. I don't even want to talk about all of it like that. I, I lost everything. I was so hurt. I was so hurt. I was so hurt. I was mad at God. God said, wait a minute. How you going to be mad at me when I told you to take him back? I had gave you a way out and you went back. So I, I, I studied that thing. I said, why did I go back? Because there was a soul tie. Come on, somebody. I'm helping you tonight. You might not believe it. You're trying to figure out why I keep going back. I don't even want to be with that person. That's a soul tie. You got to break that thing. So this fool had the nerve to come back. Mm -hmm. After I got everything clear and I had to go through some stuff, y'all. I had to go. Y'all don't want to know. I had to go through some stuff. Who hallelujah. Y'all don't know. And so long story short, <laughs> while I'm trying to recoup everything and I'm trying to, I'm like, I lost everything. It was just crazy. I couldn't believe that was happening to me and how it was happening. It was my fault. I couldn't blame nobody. I'm telling you right now, he's, do you know he wanted to get remarried? So I had to look him dead in his eyes and let him know. Deanna back. Don't touch me. Don't talk to me. And it's over. And I'm going to tell you how real I had to get. He started stalking me. I say, if you come to this house again, I said, look in my eyes. I'm not going to tell y'all what I said, but y'all can imagine. I was serious. I said, you really don't know what I'm capable of. I said, but if you, you, y'all ain't ready for me tonight. I'm being real for real. Oh, don't, don't tell me. Y'all. Everybody got a pass. Everybody know I was, I was not the one back in the day. I cut you, whatever it takes to make you leave. Nobody playing. I did that for real. And I let him know, don't come back to this door. Because now I'm, I'm gone. I ain't even thinking about God. I ain't going to lie. I'm not thinking about God. You didn't took all my money. You got the nerve to come back in my life. So let's, so God had to calm me down. And you know what God did? I ain't never told this whole story, God. La, hallelujah. God said, you're going to have to leave Sacramento. That's when I moved to Cal I mean, to Atlanta in 2012. I said, why I got to leave? He said, because you're going to end up in jail for doing something crazy. Because he's not going to leave you alone. So I had to leave for two years and go back to California. Are y'all understanding this whole story? Okay, let me come back around. Soul ties. But really because I heard no and I made it a yes. The first day I met that dude, God said, Deanna, you don't want that. And I'm, God, you know. But truth and all, truth be told, we are slept together. It was a soul tie. I'm thinking I'm in love. Y'all. I'm on somebody, but deep inside in my spirit, I knew something was wrong. Now let's forward to the end, cause now that's that's it. That's 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 all I'm willing to say, cause a lot more happened. I ended up with cervical cancer. Now this is what I, I after I did some investigative work, which I should have done before. The woman before him, before me, had cervical cancer. The woman before her had cervical cancer. Y'all ain't ready for me. Are you ready for me for real? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I almost died. It was, <laughs> y'all can't take my testimony. So I repented to God. I said, God, I did this. You know, some people, when you get in situations, you want to blame everybody else. No, I took my, I said, God, I did this. I said, but if you forgive me, I'll never do it again. And that's why you don't see me married today. They've had some with that tribe, but if I don't hear the confirmation, I don't care how fine you are. How much money you got, who you think you are, what the pastor say, what this one say. I really don't care what none of y'all say. If God don't literally wake me up and say, this is whom, I'm not doing it. I'll be alone for the rest of my life, and I'm not just saying that. I went through too much and lost too much. And, and the greatest thing I lost besides the money, my health, and everything else, and friends, because my friends was like, you tripping. We can't be a... I mean, my fr real friends, they don't want to see you go through that. They walked away. And I was mad at them. But I had to forgive them because I understood. Real friends don't want to stand by and watch you. Y'all wondering why people walking away. They ain't trying to watch you go through that stupid stuff that you are choosing to go through. Because it's a choice. It becomes a choice after a while. Come on, somebody. So, long story short, I understand now why people do what they do. But I also understand if you don't have no firm foundation. But now, let's go back. What, what church I told y'all I was associated with? That church where they was doing all that stuff with the marriages. Hello? Is it starting to make sense? 
not even knowing that spirit was already on me. I'm looking at it like y'all say, and I'm looking at everybody else, but it was already on me. And that's probably why I made that decision. Uh, still not putting it all on the church because I'm a grown woman. I'm trying to tell you, too many of you are doing it, and I almost lost my life. Y'all wonder why there's domestic violence? Because God have not joined everything together. Let me go with some more scripture. Well, we going in tonight. We going in. I didn't know I was going to have to tell. That's why I tell you. God always made me tell everything. And I ain't lying because I'm not a person that just like to talk like that. Not my business. Okay. So anyway, I want to talk to you about why God judgment was on Sodom and Gomorrah. God says that even in the end, there was marrying. They were drinking. They were sexing. Hmm. What are we doing today? And when I say we, I ain't doing that, but I'm just saying, God look at us, that's the children of Israel. What, what we doing? Party. Everybody want to get that bag. Smoking weed. Just having fun, huh? Don't you know all that stuff distorts your judgment spiritually and physically? And you wonder why we have domestic violence? Wives killing husbands and vice versa, which is sad all the way around because hold on not just a woman can be abused A man could be abused and hold on we're gonna peel this onion backwards. You know, what's one of the worst forms of abuse mental Some of y'all talk to people just nasty in front of everybody and that was another thing oh, <laughs> I, I had a epiphany y'all saw that My mentor came to try to help us out And let me tell y'all what happened. Let me tell y'all what happened he played so cool that she didn't believe me. She believed him. I, I ain't gonna lie. I, I started getting crazy because I couldn't believe it. In front of people, they would act so nice. Oh, I'm talking about that's that bipolar disorder. I'm talking about they'll be like, I don't know why they do that. I mean, come on, somebody. Don't act like y'all on here. I hope y'all feeling me. I hope y'all understand what this really is. I'm trying to stop y'all from making mistakes that I did and other people and that people are dating today because of. And yet y'all want to get married. Unless it's God. You have no business marrying somebody. And you have no business jumping in bed with them. I'm just going to be real. Y'all be better stop. That lust that lust got people doing. Oh Lord he want me to go here. Y'all wondering why these kids dying? That happened to me and I told y'all about it. How I was dating somebody in Opelousas, Louisiana. And he looking at my daughter. And I left him that same night. I said because you're going to make me hurt you. See, most of y'all act like, I don't see nothing, I don't see, you see him looking at your daughter, you see him looking at your son, but y'all just, y'all want that man so bad, y'all acting like Big Mama didn't did 20, 30, 40 years ago, oh, I don't act like y'all don't know, when people used to molest people and they used to stay right there and act like it didn't, wasn't going on, that's that same generational curse and spirit, but this time they killing them, and God gonna get you, oh God gonna get you, but for, for, for some sex, and half of them ain't working because if they have that, they, they can't even keep a job because anything dysfunctional is dysfunctional all the way. Come on, somebody. I don't care. Now, I know that there are functioning workers. Come on, somebody. I mean, they can really work, but only for so long. Oh, I know what I'm talking about, baby. I worked in a health field 14 years. Don't tell me. Uh-uh. Two years on a mental ward. Mm-hmm. Them people, they could not. Let me tell y'all something right quick. I'll tell you this story. They were so scared of this one guy because he did end up killing the doctor. I wasn't scared of him. One day he had like he was coming by me. I said, I said, act fool. I said, we're going to tear this hospital up. He just said, you crazy. I said, yeah. <laughs> Y'all think it's a game? People play crazy. <laughs> Them demons know. Oh, Y'all ain't ready for me tonight. Y'all ain't ready for me tonight. So let me continue what God said. God said the reason why he, he, he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah was the same reasons why we have a problem today. He said we don't have the poor and needy. We're haughty. We're detestable. He said and we're lustful. We're doing things. He said that, that can't even be spoken of even to the children. That's the same reason why he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. They were doing, you remember they wanted to have sex with an angel? So tell me how perverted that is. And that's that spirit right there. A spirit of perverseness. Oh, God, I hear you. Those that get married for sex. Those that get married for money. And I've seen this close up. You know, whatever you do to get him, it's the same thing you got to do to keep him, right? If you got him with money or you got her with money, you're going to have to keep that money coming or she going to the next one with money. Mm -hmm. or sex because if you're not a sexual person like that 
you gonna get tired of it anyway, and they're gonna they're gonna on the side. Y'all ain't ready for me. Y'all ain't ready for me. Stop marrying who God didn't ordain for you. It may cost you life, brothers and sisters. That's what this is about tonight. And this is serious. I know y'all kind of clowning because you know I'm I'm a character, meaning that I'm very dramatic. But this is serious. This stuff is not. It's too much. Go our kids paying for it. Our family paying for it. You paying for it behind something. Uh, somebody you know ain't worth two cents. I'm sorry. Mom used to always say, you lay down with a dog, you're going to get some fleas. So, let me continue. Let me throw some scripture in there again. Praise God. I'm sorry. I just, okay, so King James Version. He says, likewise, Luke 17, 28 says, likewise, also, as it was in the days of Lot, they did eat, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, they built it. Do you understand? We just went back in time. Everybody, let me ask you something. Y'all remember 20, 30 years ago? People cared about people. Now, if it ain't about money or honey or funny, don't act like y'all don't know what I'm saying. Don't make me have to break that down. Money, y'all know what I mean. Honey, sex, funny. You want a little bit, of, little bit of men and a little bit of women. Don't play with me. Perverted spirit. And I love everybody. Ain't nobody bashing nobody. But y'all know what's wrong. You know what's right. Come on, somebody. Ooh, that's what God want me to talk about. How many women? Okay, so the man starts cheating, right? And you don't let the woman know because, of course, you're cheating. Y'all know how many women that people that ran up on them and killed them because men cheating and they didn't even know what hit them? Because you didn't know she was psycho. You just thought she had good sex. But you didn't know she was psycho and had good sex. And vice versa. Y'all women meet these men. And your husband end up dead or something. Well I don't know. And then you you accessory for murder. You're not even counting the cost of those spirits. Don't you know that witches and warlocks. They seek out true men and women of God. And let me tell you something. Everybody on different levels. You don't have to be an apostle prophet to understand that somebody's seeking to kill you. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. I don't know what part y'all don't understand. Because stealing is bad, killing is bad, and destroy is worse. Because that means I'm going to destroy everything. Oh, come on somebody. Hallelujah. Let me continue this. I'm helping somebody tonight. I'm helping somebody tonight. And God told me to tell y'all this too. Most of the time, y'all will say, well, it hurts and I love them. Love you. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. When you love you, you start seeing yourself as valuable. You're not going to let a person demean you or talk to you crazy or mistreat you. Come on, somebody, hallelujah. Because ain't nowhere that's in the scripture. The Bible says, love your wife as God loves the church. And he says, women, provoke not your husband. So I don't know what y'all talking about. What kind of marriage is this? Hold on. Did y'all know? that men wrote, wrote the wedding vows there are technically no wedding vows for him or her in the bible and it does not actually mention wedding vows so that means men wrote that because I, I i'm reminded if it had been god that wrote it god would have probably said what i had he, he did what i have joined together let no man put asunder but i'm sure he would have put some some little excerpts in there like make sure this is of me Wait for a confirmation. Use wisdom and discernment. Oh, y'all ain't ready for me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Hold on. And so God told me to tell you, count the cost. There are too many people hurting. There are too many children. And can I tell you something? And I know y'all don't care about this part because y'all think when y'all get married, it's just you and him. No, it's not. It's all your friends. It's all your family. It's the people that love you. <laughs> and it affects everybody. It don't just affect you unless you're just selfish and don't care because most of y'all will be like that. Well, it's mine. It, yeah, it, yeah, it was yours. But also, if you said it in front of everybody else, <laughs> then they were witnesses. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I think the problem is this. We have to quit thinking like the world. You have to come back to the oracles of God. If you don't know how to wait, God, help me with my flesh. God, help me with my mind. You got to pray over your mind. God, help me. You got to pray over your spirit, God. Because a lot of people do it because of loneliness. Y'all get online, be trying to find these men. <laughs> I don't know, man. 
I'm laughing because I got to tell y'all one more story. And I'm getting off of here before God made me tell something else. But this is crazy. I don't know why. I guess this is for y'all that be dating online. Y'all know I did everything under the sun, right? Thank God I'm safe. So anyway, um, I got lonely. I was in Atlanta. That's when I was younger. And um, I got on some kind of website. I don't know. And I met this guy. He was a big biker guy, right? But on the on the site, he looked it different. So in person, and, and I messed around and gave him my real address. So he come, picked me up, and we went to his apartment. And, you know, at first I was like, okay, kind of big, big. I said, but you know what? He, he, he nice, right? Honey, and we was drinking. This was, like I said, it was a long time ago. It was 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I still had to go to the bathroom, right? So I went in the wrong room. Y'all, I'm not lying or exaggerating. That room had whips, all kind of stuff like you see in a movie. I'm talking about it, it filled the whole, the whole, uh, the whole room. Whips, chains, masks. I'm not lying. Knives, all kind of stuff. Honey, I ain't gonna lie. I ain't never been a performer, but that night I performed myself. Yes, I did. I immediately started acting like I was regurgitated. I said, I'm sick. I'm sick. I gotta go home. I said, I don't know. I said, it must have been something I ate. I said, I gotta go. I gotta go. And I got, I, I got up. I got out of there. And I called my friends that were for the FBI. I said, if anything ever happened, this is the guy. And I've never, ever got online again to this day. <laughs> that scared me. I don't know what that guy was into. I don't know what he used to do. But I was scared. I, you know, that was God. Even though I was in Rome, that was God that sent me in that other room. Oh my girl, you don't know what you get ready to get into. I don't know, but this and he was way bigger than me. There's no way I could have fought him except with the power of God. And so I'm saying this to say, even though I'm telling hilarious stories, this is real. You know how many girls that meet on Facebook, young girls, and they and they they swindle them, make them think that they're young. And they taking them and raping them and kidnap them. We got to be a better example for example for our children. So you can't be acting a hot mess, especially if you have a daughter or a son. They watching everything you say and do. Whoo! I know I didn't got deep and down. I wasn't trying to do all this, but I'm full. God made me. And y'all don't know. This real, this this real. I'm sorry, I, 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 y'all. Y'all can see I want to cry, cause I don't think y'all understand. Y'all better stop, man. Life is too short. Oh, life is too short. If I'd have known the stuff I know when I was young, right? We all say that. Stop, just stop, just stop, and wait on God. I can't, I can't stress that enough. It's worth, it, it, it's, it's worth it. Yeah, and, and let me tell you how you get you deal with that lonely spirit. You just pray, Father God. Or uh, me, I know I'm, I'm about to tell y'all what I do. I really don't care. I look at cartoons. I sure do. Fifty one years old, we turn the decent ones. I'm sure, and laugh all night long till I left myself to sleep. Don't even, don't even think about it no more. You gotta have some kind of mechanism, because that spirit is real. That that spirit to have you calling people you ain't never called, don't even want to call, but but you lonely. Or you just want somebody to, don't play with me. Don't, I'll bet that you want somebody to play with you. Y'all know it's true. They mess with my video, y'all. Oh, Lord, let me get up out of here. Let me get out of here. Oh, y'all ain't got me hot to try. And what I mean by that is the Holy Spirit just, I'm so hot. Because the Holy Spirit, you know how it overtakes you. So this is all love. Not trying to hurt nobody, but life too short. It's been since 2012. When me and him got divorced. And the crazy part is, if y'all hear my music, he, he does my background. I thought I thought we was going to be together. You know, that's why I did what I did. You know, it wasn't right. but And a prophet is lied to me. I forgive him. I'm like, oh, y'all supposed to be together. <laughs> I was like, God, let me tell y'all something. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. Before I get off of here. God is not going to tell anybody else who your husband is or your wife before you. Come on, somebody. God ain't going to tell them before you. Now, they'll give you confirmation. But God is not going to tell you, you know, that's your hook. But we, no, no, God going to tell you first, honey. And then God going to make you wait 
because you be trying to make something happen. God will say, sit back and wait now. I'm still working on him. I'm still working on her. Uh, it, God is a timing God. God is an order God. God is a loving God. God is a respectful God. And I'm going to end it with this. If they don't treat you like God would in a man flesh, with love, respect, honor, dignity, I mean, they're going to think you're the most beautiful thing in this world. They're not going to talk to you crazy, put you down, beat you, do all kind of cuss you in front of the kid. They ain't finna do all that. Not the man that God sent. I got to tell y'all one more thing. I remember laying in that bed when it was over. And I had no, I was so ashamed. You know, when, when the facade come off, I was so ashamed. Because I heard people talking about, and she spoiled her whole prophets and look what she done. I was so hurt. And that was in 2012. Yes, I did. I did. i never forget I was laying in the bed. I ain't had no, I was so embarrassed. I, I was just hurt, everything. Because, I, oh, also, I didn't tell y'all he was cheating, cheating on me with 11 different girls. Oh, so I had to go get myself checked, make sure I didn't have nothing. Yeah, I'm saying it like that because y'all need to understand that stuff real. So anyway, long story short, um, <laughs> I don't want to tell you the other thing because um, I can't tell y'all that part. But it was deep. It was deep. It was too deep. But, um. I will tell you what God told me before I get off of here. I said, God, what happened? He said, Deanna, I always remember this. When I send the man or woman to somebody, if I say that y'all are the apple of my eye, why would I send anybody to treat you less than? He said, that ain't me. That's the devil. And I'm going to leave y'all with that. All right, God bless you. This is Apostle Deanna Dixon. Real life soldiers for that is who we are. <laughs> God bless. Kyra Johnson said, Apostle, you funny girl. I know, but I'm serious. Shoes. <laughs> y'all got me sweating up in here. I ain't messing with y'all. <laughs> All right. Bye bye. Love y'all.